Assalamualaikum and a very good evening. So today I would like to present about my final year project proposal entitled Fractionation Behavior of Pets, Chocolate Tempering. My name is Putri Saidatina Ashifa binti Ahmad Fauzi with metric number 180689. I am a bet I am a student of Bachelor of Chemical Engineering. My supervisor is Dr. Dayang Radia Awang Biak. The problem statement for this research is the global market of chocolate was $83.2 billion in 2010 with an estimated increase to $98.3 billion in 2016. Chocolate represents 55% of the global confectionery sales. These numbers illustrate how big the chocolate industry is worldwide and what possible improvement in the production chain could lead to. In Malaysia, chocolate producers are mainly originated from overseas company with undeniably magnificent and fine textured chocolate products. The criteria of good chocolates are said to have a good snap, gloss and melts in the mouth, not in the hands. However, being in a tropical climate country, this poses a major problem. At the same time, the hardness of the chocolate should also be balanced with the criteria of good chocolates and should not be compensated. The biggest cause of loss in the chocolate industry is the development of fat bloom, meaning the formation of an unpleasant greyish haze on the chocolate surface and quality loss. In chocolate, there is a phenomena what we call as polymorphism. Polymorphism is the capability of a molecule to crystallize in a number of various crystal packing configurations. As we all know, chocolate consists of a continuous phase of fat. So, uh, these are the polymorphic form or polymorphic form of the crystal structures that can be developed in chocolate. Form 1, form 2, form 3, form 4, form 5 and form 6. This uh, polymorphic form has an increasing melting point. So therefore, tempering is a process by which the fat phase in chocolates is subjected to thermal and mechanical means to position the fat into the, the desirable stable of polymorphic form in suitable number, size and the proper time. So as we can see here, in chocolates, when we heat them, the forms, the crystal will transform into form 1, form 2, form 3, they will increase in this order. So they will always increase when the heat subjected is increased. So the problem here lies when the thermodynamically stable form, form 6, is not the one that the consumer finds attractive. The order of stability is uh, downwards which means this is the least stable and this is the most stable. So, however, in the confectionery industry, specifically in the chocolate industry, form 5, which is this form, holds all the desired properties of good chocolate. Based on the problem statement that I have said before, this lies the foundation for the objectives of this research. Firstly, the objective is to analyze properties of chocolate. Number two, to study the factors affecting the thermal behavior of chocolates during tempering, to investigate the effects of value-added fillers on solidification behavior of chocolates. So, in order for me to lay out the methodology, I will base it on the objectives that I have just said it just now. So this is where the execution of objectives happens. Firstly, in order to execute the first objective, I will use milk and dark cooking chocolate and analyze using gas chromatography for the triacylglycerol or TAG content. Number two, in order for me to execute the second objective, I will execute it by changing or by seeing the behavior of the temperature which is the crystallization temperature, reheat temperature and also the cooling rate. Number two, I will see the shear and number three is the tempering time.
Next, in order for me to execute the third objective, which is the effect of value added fillers, I will use pomegranate gem that will be uh, subjected into three different processing conditions for the fillers. Number one, by freeze dry. Number two, by frozen. Number three, I will cool it to room temperature. To make sure that this research goes on with the world of thoughts, I have done a literature review. So one of the most notable works that can be mentioned here are these that can be seen in the screen. So number one is the research work by Le Reverend and Fryer. Coles and Bacalis in the year of 2010 who investigated the analysis of tempered chocolate using x-ray diffraction method. Number two, the research work of Kane, Sabula and Hargreaves in the year of 1994 who patented under Lodus Crocklin which invented the seeding of untempered chocolate with SOS Rich. Now that stands for steric olic steric rich crystals slurried in a liquid oil or melted fat carrier and proportioned into untempered chocolate and the chocolate becomes tempered number three the work by windhab in the year of 2009 and many others who uses differential scanning calorimetry to study the tempering behavior in chocolates now this is where they will search or they will study about the temperature profile of the chocolates Number four is the work by Stapley, Tewksbury and Fryer in the year of 1999 who successfully studied the effect of shear, temperature and tempering time on chocolates by using concentric cylinder for a uniform shear on large mass of chocolate. The work by this group of researchers has successfully quantified the shear that is subjected onto the chocolates which has not been done by other researchers. Number 5 is the work by Loisel, Keller, Leck, Lone and Olivier in the year of 1997 who uses surface scraped heat exchanger or could be shortened as SSHE to directly quantify the viscosity of chocolate in situ of tempering process which uh, can be measured uh, in correspondence to the oil viscosity number number six is the chitana ready ready and Negi in the year of 2013 who studied the preparation and properties of probiotic chocolates using yogurt powder and value added chocolates and lastly is the work by Afo Aqua who uh, Patterson Fowler and Vieira in the year of 2008 who studied the rheology, textural and calorimetric properties of chocolates. Now the works of these notable researchers has led me to also can be seen that there is a gap that my research can fill in which uh, can be further referred to the objectives that I have just mentioned before. So, based on the works of what I have mentioned just now, the works of this researcher, it can be seen that there is a gap of knowledge in which I can fill in. Uh, based on what I have researched, none of them has studied the value added chocolate by um, filling the chocolate with pomegranate fillings pomegranate known for its wondrous benefits has not been studied extensively or scientifically by the group of researchers so then it can be seen that uh, it is agreeable by most researchers and also by seeing from this literature review and the knowledge of gap that I would like to fill in the novelty lies in 
which chocolate making is considered an art form by many chocolate makers. However, in this research, it is desired to study the science or behavior of it and utilize it to achieve the most optimum conditions to get the best chocolate product. In order for me to lay out the overall methodology, as I have said, I will, I will refer to the objectives. So here is the first, second and third objective. So that is how the execution of methodology will go. Firstly, I will analyze milk and dark cooking chocolate using gas chromatography for the TAG content. Chocolate is then tempered using different tempering factors which are tempering time, tempering temperature and shear. Chocolate that are temperable will be analyzed using differential scanning calorimetry texture analyzer, gloss meter, and viewed under the microscope. Chocolate that has been best tempered will only then be subjected to pomegranate filling. Pomegranate will be filled either by freeze drying, frozen blocks, or cooled at room temperature. Chocolate filled pomegranate will be tested for sensory evaluation. Now, moving on to the tempering setup and cycle. This is the tempering setup that I will use and this is the tempering cycle that I will use. Okay, firstly, the chocolate uh, will be inserted into the cuet cylinder. The cuet cylinder is filled with chocolate and then the cuet cylinder is then immersed into a water bath which the heat is supplied by the heating element. The chocolate is then being stirred or sheared using the motto by the cuet cylinder. In order for me to monitor the chocolate's temperature, I will insert a temperature indicator as can be seen here. This temperature indicator could either be a thermometer, a digital thermometer or a thermocouple in order for me to constantly monitor the chocolate. So how is this tempering process can be executed? This tempering process will undergo the, this temperature cycle, a cycle of temperature. Firstly, the chocolate will first be melted at 50 degrees Celsius until it has been fully melted. After it has been fully melted, it will then be cooled down gradually until the tempering temperature. This tempering temperature, this tempering temperature will be varied, will be varied and I will explain later what are the variation of tempering temperature that will be used in this research and then after reaching the tempering temperature, it will then be held for a certain time and this uh, uh, this time is what we call as temper time. This temper time will also be varied and I will explain what are the variation of the tempering time used in this research. After that, it will the temperature, the chocolate is then will be uh, heated to a, to a rewarm temperature of 33 degrees Celsius just for a quick uh, rewarm. So this, uh, the, the variables that will be varied are tempering temperature, temper time and also shear which will be controlled by the motto. Now, the factors of tempering. So for the tempering process, we will be using cooking dark chocolate and cooking milk chocolate. These two chocolates will be subjected to three different tempering factors. The first tempering factor is the tempering temperature. The first temperature that will be used is 16 degrees Celsius, 22 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius. The shear will be based on the motor speed of the cuet cylinder which is low, medium and high. The tempering time is 200 second, 400 second, 600 second. So how is this executed? Say, for example, using cooking dark chocolate, 
with the combination of these three different factors. So, for example, cooking dark chocolate is um, studied using 16 degrees Celsius at a low shear with the tempering time of 200 seconds. So, it can be seen that uh, it can be seen here that each uh, type choc each chocolate type will be subjected to three different combination of these three factors which yields that each type will have 27 samples however even though 27 samples sounds a lot but not all of them are temperable only temperable chocolates will be subjected to the temper analysis now as i was saying the temperable chocolates will only only temperable chocolates will be subjected to temper analysis so based on what i have mentioned in the objective of this research which is good chocolates consists of those who have a good snap melts in the mouth and have good gloss and also most importantly does not have fat glue so how do we assess the qualities of these chocolates is what i will explain in this temper analysis number one for texture determination the snap test was performed using a ta hdi 500 texture analyzer stable microsystem vienna cord was employed to investigate the textural properties of chocolate products all measurements were performed using a back extrusion test temperature profile in order for me to assess the melt in the mouth not in the hands good quality chocolate is by executing using differential scanning calorimetry of pc driven perkin elmer dsc7 number three in order for me to assess the good quality chocolate of having a good gloss gloss of chocolate surface was measured or is measured will be measured using the multiple angle tricot gloss meter 805a slash 806h gloss system elgin il number four in order for me to observe or to see if there are any fat migration onto the surface of the chocolate is by assessing the microstructural properties that will be viewed using scanning electron microscopy pomegranate filled chocolates pomegranate filled chocolates will only be proceeded when the chocolate is tempered best so firstly pomegranate is cooked until it becomes a thick jam this jam is subjected into three different methods of processing method for filling number one freeze dry the jam will be dried in a freeze dryer using a leophilization incorporation usa model lt5s the freezing cycle will be at negative 26 degrees celsius for two hours the drying cycle will be at negative 25 degrees celsius to 25 degrees celsius for 18 hours and vacuumed from 100,000 meter tall to 200 500 m tall were used for a total period of 20 hours the powder obtained will be packed with pro polypropylene covers and stored in refrigerator the powder is mixed with the chocolate and then will be proceeded with the tempering procedures number two frozen blocks the jam is poured into mold and frozen in a standard freezer with a standard freezer temperature of negative 8 degrees celsius frozen jam will then be coated with tempered chocolate 
Lastly, cool to temperature jam. The tempered chocolate is poured into molds to make chocolate shells. The jam that has been cooled to room temperature is placed in the chocolate shells. The shell is then sealed with another layer of chocolate for the base. After executing pomegranate filled chocolates, we will then, I will then, execute a sensory evaluation. This chocolate filled pomegranate is evaluated using sensory procedures which will soon be obtained from Food Technology Faculty, University Putra, Malaysia to hire expert panelists to evaluate the chocolate in terms of its sensory the chocolate will also be cut to obtain the cross section and the image will be captured.